Uh, hi guys, Chris from JNS again. Um, I'm, I'm going to uh, bore you to death again with another Trap Day uh, video. Um, just to enlighten you, this is the second... Um, there was Gary, the instructor, letting us out there. This is the second uh, video from Alton Park on the 16th of September. Uh, this was after I'd had the session with Gary, the instructor, um, and had gone out in the afternoon to try and put some of his advice um, into practice uh, and uh, see what I could do. These little bikes here, these are those um, CB500s that are really popular racing, um, are, are really popular for, for, for cheap racing at the minute. I think the Thundersport is a few different uh, um, a few different race categories for them but the the 500 are pretty pretty popular um and a lot of those guys are out there practicing as well um uh, and you, you got to give them those guys a pretty wide berth because they're all over the place and they're really quick and they're quick in the corners as well so uh, and they can change direction really quickly as well so always give them a bit of a wide berth those guys but uh, they're great to watch and sit behind um it looks really good fun actually but um i'm too old for that uh, so yeah, here I was. We're going back out again. It looks a little bit dull, but it, it's not quite as. It wasn't quite as dull as it as it looks on the video, on the screen. It was um, uh, it, it was fairly bright, and uh, track temperature was a little bit colder than normal because it's um, mid September and it, it was fairly dull. There wasn't much sun out, uh, so the track temperature was a bit cold. But um, apart from that, it was all right, and and the grip seemed to be pretty good. So I wasn't uh, too worried about. Um, uh, about traction out here it seemed all right so um yeah i'd followed as i said earlier on i'd, I'd followed uh gary the instructor from um from that particular day this was a no limits day um and he was doing some uh some instructing and um i, I had a session with him which was good where he followed me then i followed him and he watched me and then he came back past me and gave me uh, um uh, gave me some instruction and some pointers uh, later on when we went back into the garage and we had a debrief and he, he showed me where I could make, make up some, some different time in chicanes etc if you remember from last time so this is what I tried to do this time was go back out and uh, put some of his advice into practice um, not particularly well but then there you go um, it was a little bit different didn't seem to get much quicker really but I don't think you do until you sort of get used to any changes that you're going to make especially around your most common circuit that you go to all the time if you're going to make changes there it does take a little while because the the lines and your breaking points and your apexes and uh, places to look at and markers your your um, circuit markers change a little bit and if you change them and you're used to them it takes a bit of a while to get used to any any different changes so but you know i had to go with it and um, that's what you got to do you got to keep progressing really just to get those that extra bit of time um I do about a one I do about 150s around here and I'm sure I could do better than that um and I need to I'm a bit lazy there I should really cut over to the other side of the circuit at that point there but I'm, I'm too lazy to but it, it makes a better line up up over uh, Clay Hill if you go that way I'll, I'll show you on the next one round um uh yeah I'm um trying to do better i'd love to get into the 40s just the high 140s or, or maybe mid 140s would be mega wouldn't it but you're talking seconds there where i need to find seconds and the, you know some people watch this video and say yeah there's a second there there's a tenth of a second there there's there's half a second there what are you doing taylor and uh, i know that but it's discovering it myself isn't it and getting out of dirty old habits and doing new stuff to to go that little bit quicker um so uh, yeah, it was a, it was a fairly good day. There was a little bit of traffic at first, but there wasn't too much um, in the afternoon. There was less bikes around in the afternoon, so it's um, we had fairly uh, plenty of uh, free track really to play with. Only there's only a few people to overtake, and it's it was a um, it's a not a horrendously fast fast group this one either, which I quite enjoy um, uh, because you're not. Um, uh, you, you, I mean, it's, it's good to get go out there and get some really fast guys. I and mean, if you're in a fast group, people flying past you all the time. But you know, if you can hook on the back of someone, that's great, and you can you can learn uh, you can learn something from them. Just someone that's that little bit quicker than you, 
um, and hook on the back of them and you can see where uh, you can make some changes and maybe go that little bit quicker um, which is always quite quite good to do but this this particular one there wasn't too many of those guys around so um, I had to sort of do it on my own but you know you make the most of it um, just coming into uh, oh I forgot to mention about the uh, about the lineup Clay Hill and I'll, I'll talk about that and again the next time round um, uh, getting used to the bike and uh, the tyres I'm running Dunlops which I've mentioned before um, something was a little bit strange here I noticed when I came in from this I think it was this session or the session before I noticed that I was beginning to get a little bit of cold tear on my rear tyre on the right hand side um, uh, obviously it's a clockwise circuit Olsen and you tend to use the right hand side of the tyre more than the left hand side and I was getting some cold tear there on that right hand side which was a little bit strange because I'd not had that for a good while and, and normally it's soft suspension that creates it or you know the wrong setup somewhere um, normally suspension tyre issue obviously so um, I think there's going to be an image of that cold tear. I think so. I think Steve's going to put an image of the cold tear because I did take a, a still image of it at the time, and I sent it to my suspension guru, who um, got to, back to me fairly quickly, and I explained to him where I was. Um, he asked me what the track temperature was. Now it was it was quite cold. The track temperature. I think it was about twenty. Let's have a look. Um, I bought one of those um, temperature guns. You know the one that they always point at your head now because of COVID bought one of those and of course you can use them on the track and it gives you a an idea of what the track temperature is it gives you an idea anyway um and he asked me what the temperature was at the time and i think it was uh 29 degrees um uh 29 degrees the track temperature was and the air temperature i think was about it was a little bit cooler it was it, in the morning it was about 20 and then it cooled down to about 18 17 degrees um, so he seemed to think that it might be the track just going a little bit colder and the, the tyre getting still quite hot. So he recommended dropping it 1 PSI. I run 22 in the back of it and he said drop it to 21 see what happens. 1 PSI I'm thinking, well, it's not going to make any difference. Anyway, so then I went out in I think it was the uh, second to last session and the tyre started cleaning up. I think there's another still image coming up now. Of, uh, of the tyre and this, and this is how it cleaned up this was after I just dropped it 1 PSI um, and I do hammer on about um, about tyre pressures I know I really do and I check them every time I come in um, and make sure that the, the um, warmers are on properly And but every time I come in from uh, a session I always check front and rear tyre pressure just to see where I'm up to and make sure they're in in line with where they're supposed to be and it is so important and you know what uh, what that one PSI made all the difference, um, and it started to clean up. And you'll you'll see that from the you see that from the from the picture. Um, and I couldn't believe it, but that's how important they are. It makes makes a tremendous difference. Um, and you don't want that cold tear because it wrecks your tire, especially if you've got a few sessions left in it, or or maybe even a complete track day. Because you'll get maybe a couple of days out of um, out of one of those Dunlops, and if you wreck it on the first day. And it's got that big tear in it you've got to throw away and put a new one on and they're not cheap so check those tire pressures it's really important um uh now i think oh that got a bit of a bug or something on the camera there. that's a bit nasty isn't it? it looks a bit cloudy but um yeah it's 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 just a bug it's not it's not cloud coming in um but let, let me uh we'll get back round to um we'll get back round to to ah oh, I'm pulling in now. There we go. There we go, I've obviously had enough <laughs> of everything um, and I'm going to check that tyre pressure probably and see whether it's it's cleaning up or not. But um, something interesting for you to see, tyre pressures, that's what it's all about and it can tear the tyre um, from nothing and you don't expect it to and it can all be about a cold track 
on a hot tyre. You know, if that cold, if that track drops a little bit uh, in temperature, it makes a big difference. So um, keep checking your tyre pressures. Uh, OK, that's it from me. I hope uh, you guys got something from that and I didn't bore you to tears. Uh, and I'll speak to you soon.